Seekers. That was a song called Opal by Sid Barrett, and it's a funny song that was, I think, recorded for one of his solo albums in the early 70s, but was left off of the two solo albums that they put out in the early 70s. Sid Barrett was the original leader of the Pink Floyd, and finally came out in 1988. And my connection with that song is I heard it on a bootleg and I learned it and I planned to record it for a Dementia 13 album because it was unreleased officially and I thought I'd scoop everybody and be the first to officially release it but I was too late I didn't get uh, my recording done in time and uh, they, they put it out officially before I had a chance to sneak it on a Dementia 13 album so I never put it on a Dementia 13 album but I have a demo of it that I did uh, back back then. Anyway, so uh, today, uh, today's episode, uh, I thought I would do another one of these sort of um, episodes where I didn't have, I don't have anything really planned out to say, and I'll explain why, and here's the explanation. Yesterday, I had a root canal. This is why I didn't make a video yesterday, because I was busy having my teeth drilled, or one of my teeth drilled. And there's a whole thing around the experience of this uh, root canal which kind of made me think about something related to my practice of Zen that might be interesting to people who watch these videos. So I, uh, I moved recently and so I had to change dentists and I got recommended to a dentist to do the uh, root canal, an endodontist, I guess they're called when they do root canals. They're not a regular dentist. And I went to this guy and it was a really weird experience. The, the dentist or the endodontist I went to, the first one, had no confidence. It, it, it was the strangest uh, dental experience I ever had to go to a dentist who seemed to totally lack any confidence in his own abilities to work on my teeth. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't like um, it wasn't like in a cartoonish way. You know, I don't don't imagine like Don Knotts playing this character going, "Oh, I don't know what to do with these uh, instruments or anything." You know, it, it wasn't quite l that bad. But something about his demeanor and the things he said and just the way he acted around me gave me the impression that th that he just didn't have any confidence in, in what he was doing. And he seemed sort of um, in this really uh, bad state of mind as he was uh, as he was doing this stuff. And he kept asking me questions like what I wanted him to do as if. I was going as if I was the dentist, you know, as if I was the expert on, on teeth here in the, in the room. And then he did this thing where he, he, he started to do the work. He started giving me the injections, you know, the, the painkiller injections. I guess they don't use Novocaine anymore. It's some other kind of stuff. I always call it Novocaine. Anyway. And then he did some tests on me, like tapping my lip and saying, is it numb? Is it numb yet? And I'm going, well, it's not numb yet. And he's like, well, do you want me to start drilling? And I'm like, well, no, not, not if it's not numb. <laughs> you know, I mean, I didn't answer it quite in that tone of voice, but, you know. Um, he's saying, well, I, I don't want to give you any more shots. And I'm like, well, no, I, I don't want you to give me any more shots. Yeah, you shouldn't have too, too, many, too many shots. I'm like, uh, okay, well, what do you think we should do? And I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> so, well, I'm going to send you home, uh, and you can make another appointment and come back. Maybe we missed the nerve, and and uh, you know we we can't always hit the the nerve, and sometimes you miss the nerve, and it doesn't it doesn't uh, the novocaine or whatever it is, the painkiller doesn't work. And I'm going, uh, okay, that's really weird. So I went home, and on the way home, like immediately, uh, I I took a a lift there. I didn't drive myself. And, and, and as I'm, I'm sitting in the car, my, my whole lip and mouth goes completely numb, you know, and it just like, so, so the, the shots he gave me work, he just didn't give them enough time and, and really like literally not very much time at all. I mean, like 10 minutes, you know, I mean, I don't know how many 
minutes he waited, maybe maybe he waited 10 minutes before he sent me out of his office and then like 15 minutes and then they were numb. And the, my, my whole mouth stayed numb for the next three and a half hours. And then, and then my whole jaw ached for the next couple of days from just the preliminary stuff he'd done t- to my to my mouth. He'd put this like a big plastic wedge in my mouth to start and dental dams and, and these weird things that, that stretch my mouth out in a weird, weird, really weird way and it hurt a lot. So for the next few days it was like in pain. So I canceled my uh, follow-up appointment because I'm like, I'm not going to go back to that guy. <laughs> I don't, I don't want that guy working on my teeth if he doesn't even know how to numb up my mouth. So, you know, I went online and I found another uh, endodontist. And it just, I'm going through Yelp reviews or whatever, you know, trying to find good recommendations. And, and uh, I picked a guy who just had good recommendations and crossed my fingers that he wasn't going to be like the guy I just went to. So I went to that guy yesterday and this guy was great. Uh, the guy I went to yesterday uh, had total confidence in his ability to do the work and uh, just exuded like authority and confidence like he knew what he was doing and I was in good hands with him. He gave me the shots, waited, you know, seemingly pretty much as long as the, the last guy had waited and uh, started drilling and everything. And, you know, it wasn't a pleasant experience because they never are, but it wasn't terrible and it didn't hurt that bad. And in fact, I had the whole root canal done and I'm in less pain today. I just had it done yesterday. I'm in less pain today having had the entire operation done than I was from that last dentist when he didn't really even do anything except numb up my mouth and get it ready to do the operation. You know, I was in more pain from that than I am from the second guy who did the entire operation. Okay, so that's the preliminary thing. Okay, so the reason this got me thinking about Zen is the difference, I think, was confidence. Now, I don't know for sure. Maybe that first guy was just as well-trained as the second guy. I mean, they both had degrees in dentistry and stuff, and they both were professionals. They both they, Their offices were within like a mile of each other. They probably, you know, equal, I suppose, more or less, you know, I, I don't know, really. But the, the biggest difference uh, maybe not the only difference, but the biggest difference between the two of them, as far as I was concerned, was was the level of confidence that was exuded by each dentist or each endodontist, to be correct. And that made all the difference in the world because I didn't want to have my teeth drilled by a guy who didn't, who who wasn't confident. And I was fine to have my teeth drilled by a guy who displayed confidence. So, to me, the, this is interesting in terms of Buddhism, because the thing that attracted me and repelled me to Nishijima Roshi from, to and from, anyway, the thing that, that both attracted and repelled me to and from, uh, you'll get it, Nishijima Roshi, my teacher, the guy who ordained me, the guy who made me what I am today, uh, was his confidence. He was an extremely confident teacher. Somebody just wrote me an email asking me about fire and brimstone Buddhism and wanted me to point him to a fire and brimstone talk by Nishijima Roshi. And I don't know what he meant by the word fire or the phrase fire and brimstone. And I don't know if I've used that phrase fire and brimstone in relation to Nishijima Roshi. Like maybe I have in a book or a video or somewhere and I'd forgotten it. So maybe that's where he picked it up. But I never considered, you know, my uh, my idea of fire and brimstone is a, is a Christian preacher who tries to make his audience afraid of going to hell. And so that's not... Um, that's not the kind of guy Nishijima Roshi was. But maybe my descriptions of Nishijima Roshi gave this guy the idea of fire and brimstone because I might have been trying to describe Nishijima Roshi's confidence. Because he, he just exuded this, this extreme confidence. Like he really believed what he was saying. 
he really had faith to give it that dirty word you know that we don't use often in Buddhism and faith to me has always been a difficult concept because when I was young, I was very interested in finding a religious path because as I've often said, I think uh, on this channel and in my books and elsewhere, my, my family didn't have a religion. So I didn't understand what faith was. And when I first came across the idea of faith from Christians who I knew, it seemed to me to be a way of saying, believing in things that you kind of shouldn't believe in, you know, believing in impossible, at least to my mind, kind of stupid things, you know, uh, people walking across water, you know, faith meant believing that Jesus Christ ray rose from the dead 2000 years ago, when, when there was no way to check that out, you know, the only thing you had to go by was this old book that was that was already a translation of a translation of a translation and was ancient and and there was no way to confirm this so you had you were supposed to have faith meaning you were supposed to believe this thing happened when there was no evidence for it to happen and i couldn't have that kind of faith that 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 seemed absurd i i didn't i didn't want to have anything to do with faith if faith meant that kind of thing but i've i've come to understand faith a little bit differently from my interactions with Nishijima Roshi and it, it to me faith is a kind of confidence like he had great confidence in what he was saying and because he had great confidence in what he was saying it made it easier for me to accept it but as I said earlier it kind of repulsed me at first because it seemed to be uh, kind of too much you know when I first started listening to him I'm like oh god I, I don't like this guy because he seems like full of himself like 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 he seemed to be he seemed to think he was always right or something but I came to understand that it wasn't that he thought he was always right he just he just spoke only of the things he really understood clearly and and that's that was his confidence and the, the caveat to that is that confidence can be misused. And sometimes people have too much confidence in things they shouldn't have confidence in. And so it's, it's kind of a difficult thing. And as I said, I, as I tried to say maybe at the beginning of this video, this is kind of an improvised video because I, I yesterday I didn't have time and right now I'm going to go to an optometrist appointment right after I finish recording this video so I want to get it done fast and I didn't have time to really get this all planned out and I think it's okay to do these unplanned out videos because I think there's a kind of value to them so you know I, I think this is okay even but I'm just telling you that I didn't plan this all the way out so it's gonna not reach a, a solid conclusion so apologies there but you know, it, it, you, you could follow Jim Jones, the, the famous Jonestown guy who, who um, had his followers commit suicide, right? Uh, look him up if you don't know who I'm talking to. Cult leaders. I mean, there's a lot of cult leaders. There's a lot of cult leaders who have tremendous faith in themselves and who can get you to do bad things. And so you don't want to follow that. So that's the dark side of faith. But the bright side of faith is somebody who... who, who knows what they're doing and and because they know what they're doing can can help you to know what you're doing how to tell the difference between the two of them would be the wonderful secret i wish i could convey to you but i don't know how to convey that to you i feel that somehow i figured that out <laughs> And, and I, in my life, has been able to tell the difference between the kind of charlatans who are going to lead me in a wrong way with their faith in bad ideas and somebody like Nishijima Roshi who had faith because he had faith in something that was true. How, what that difference is, I don't know. It seems to be kind of an intuitive thing. And if I figure it out, I'll tell you. But right now, I don't have like a, a nice um, 
bullet points I can give you. I just watched a video just before this to try to get an idea of what to say, where a guy gave, he gave like six bullet points to try to tell if something was a, a conspiracy theory or not. I thought that would be a way to try to, try to approach this video. Uh, but I, I, in the end of, of watching that, I, I can't make that kind of a list for, for this sort of thing. I, I can't give you six bullet points to, to figure out if, if the person you're listening to has the good kind of faith or the good kind of confidence or the bad kind of confidence. I don't know, but I'll work on it and maybe in a future video I'll tell you. So if you want to help me keep on making videos so that I can do a future video and tell you that, how's that for a segue? I just came up with that on the spot. You can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main and usually only ways of making a living, and I appreciate your support. But as always, you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me. So we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Laters. Bye. Here's Ziggy. He had bad poops last night. That's a little bit of TMI for you out there. Too much information. But he had bad poops last night, so I fed him oatmeal and rice this morning. Uh, and hopefully, according to the internet, that'll help bind up his poopies and he'll uh, start pooping normal again. Let's hope it works. See you later, Ziggy. Have a nice nap. Mm -hmm.